like mentioned in the fundamentals, make use of the workspaces and move on to the shading workspace. This will immediately give you a way better work environment for this task. Add new materials and assign them to the different objects. You can then define base colors for rendering and viewport colors for the default solid view in Workbench. You can also just copy colors and values by, by using Control C and Control V over them. There are a bunch of sliders on the default material, but you don't really need to worry about most of them. I'll explain some of the most basic ones. So essentially, specularity is how shiny the material is. Roughness is for how rough the shiny highlights are, so you can make a surface more reflective. Metallic is to turn it into a darker metallic surface. With the basic materials added, it's time to get into preparing the UV maps. But first, switch the viewport color to texture, and it will use textures if there are any available in the material. Create a grid or color grid texture in the material to see stretching in the viewport of the UVs. As long as the texture node is highlighted as active and plugged in, it should work for both material preview and just textured workbench view. Copy the texture node to the other materials to see it on all of them. Now you should probably see that the UV maps could use some work. In the UV editing workspace, we can then continue with this task. The reason why the grid is visible at all is because the objects come with some pre-made UV maps when created. But due to all the modeling we just did, the UVs will be stretched and some parts might be missing UVs. To fix that, we can place seams and unwrap each object again. Once all are unwrapped, select all objects, go into edit mode and use average island scale to make them all the same size and then pack UV islands to average them within that one-to-one -one UV space automatically. You can adjust the placement and size of the UV islands further to maximize the amount of space that is used for the texture. To finish off the materials, we can add some procedural textures like shown in the fundamentals, or we can just paint on the model instead. You can then replace the grid texture that we made with a new blank texture, which can then be used to continue painting on. Just make sure it's plugged into the base color so you can see it in the material preview mode. So let's just move on to the texture paint workspace. In texture paint mode, use the fill tool to fill an object with one color. You can just directly copy the colors from the material. I can also really recommend, once you start painting, to go into the options on the top and set the bleed option to a minimum of six pixels. This means it will expand the painted colors past the UV islands for six extra pixels, which might avoid visible seams later on. A color palette in the sidebar can also be a really helpful way of keeping some colors around. From here, you are free to paint on the model to give the character some extra colors and detail. Of course, I can highly recommend a drawing tablet for extra precision and control. There are many different brush settings that you can experiment with, but one of the more helpful ones is changing the fall off of the brush to make the stroke softer or harder. Use X-Mirror again to paint on both sides at the same time. This will again use the object origin as the center for mirroring. Once you get to the painting and sculpting related tasks, I can recommend to use the trackball navigation instead of the default turntable navigation. You can find it in the preferences under navigation. It takes some time getting used to, but it allows to roll the viewport for getting different angles and just better placements of strokes. Also with Shift S, you can enable smooth stroke, which makes the brush follow your cursor more like it's attached on a rubber band to make strokes very much more precise. 
As long as you're just painting on a single texture per material, you should be good to go to just paint in the usual solid workbench shading. While painting, or once you're done, don't forget to save the painted texture as a separate file, or even pack it directly into the blend file itself and save it regularly. If you should try to close Blender, it will even ask you to save the texture so no progress is lost.